Uh, good afternoon, my name's Shannon and I work here in Family History at the National Library. And today's session is Newspapers for Family History, Upgraded Trove. I'm just going to turn the camera off so I'm not distracted by my face, but don't worry, I'm still here. In today's session, we're going to focus on using Trove newspapers for family history. I don't work in the Trove team and I didn't work on the upgrade. I'm just a humble family historian who uses Trove. So I can't really help with feedback as part of this webinar, unfortunately. But if you do have any feedback, Trove would love to hear from you directly. You can get in touch with Trove via their contact form on their website. I work here at the library and even I have to use a form to submit feedback, but it's pretty easy to use. I'll show you how to find the contact form in just a bit. Okay, so in today's session, we're gonna be covering uh, browsing newspapers and we're gonna be using a family history example. We're gonna be taking a look at some of the features of online newspapers available on Trove. And then we're going to be looking at some search tips, some of which you might already be familiar with, but uh, there's hopefully something in there that you've not seen before. But first, what is Trove? Because it's not just newspapers. Trove is, what, is what's called a federated search engine. It brings together over 1,000 catalogue records from libraries, archives and museums, big and small, and makes their collection searchable through one easy portal. And the best thing about Trove is that it's free. For family historians, Trove is probably best known for its collection of digitised newspapers, which begin in 1803 with the Sydney Gazette and New South Wales Advertiser. Coverage of most newspaper titles runs through to about 1954. There aren't many newspapers available after 1954 due to copyright. Some later issues of newspapers such as the Canberra Times have been made available on Trove with the permission of the publisher. And the Canberra Times goes all the way up to 1995 on Trove. As well as newspapers, Trove also provides free access to digitized Commonwealth and New South Wales government gazettes. Gazettes are an excellent resource for family historians. Here are just some of the things you might find using gazettes. You might find a lot of information about comics. I found uh, some uh, excellent information about some comic ancestors, such as when they were issued tickets of leave, when they absconded, uh, when they were granted various pardons or certificates of freedom. Uh, you might find uh, government employment notices, such as teachers, police positions, or uh, public servants. You might find information about businesses founded, bankrupted, bought and sold, extended and closed. Probate notices, you might come across those in the government gazettes. You might come across professional registers, architects, medical practitioners, nurses, solicitors, etc. You might even find information about criminals and bush rangers, such as reward notices and crimes. And perhaps one of my favorite, uh, but least exciting bits about the uh, government gazettes is uh, the legislation, proclamations of acts and regulations. What laws were our ancestors living under that shaped their entire lives? But today we'll be focusing on newspapers, not gazettes. So to get to Trove, you can access it via the National Library's homepage. It's right here under Partner Collections. Or you could just Google Trove in whatever browser you're using and it should come up, hopefully as a first result. So we'll just give Trove a click. Okay, you get a, uh, some cultural advice information. You click here to find out more. I won't go into that too much today. And here we are on the Trove homepage. I just wanted to briefly cover some of the elements that we can see here. Trove is split into a series of landing pages. Explore, categories, community, research, and first Australians. We're not going to look at all of these today, but we will be spending some time in Explore. In the top right corner of the screen, you can sign up to Trove or log in if you already have an account. We'll talk more about this a bit later on. It's not necessary to create an account to just search Trove, but you do need it to create a list, and it's good to have if you are into text correcting, tagging, 
tagging and uh, putting notes on articles because it gives you a greater level of control over edits that you make. I quite like checking the Trove news as there's occasionally uh, information about new content that's being added to Trove or information about upcoming or past Trove webinars. My other favorite page is the help page, which has pages on how to search Trove. A lot of what we'll be covering today can be found here. You can also access various help pages through the categories landing page just over here. Okay, so for instance, we've got newspapers and gazettes category. We can click on that. And we can see there's information about those categories, as well as information about searching them. Today we'll be focusing our attention on the digitized newspapers available on Trove. So let's go take a look at them. Broadly, there are two ways of locating a newspaper article using Trove. Those are searching and browsing, and which one you use will depend on how much information you already have. Browsing is particularly useful if you already know when an article was published and in which newspaper, or if you're seeking contextual information to bolster your family history research. Perhaps you're looking for information about things that were happening around the time of your ancestors' birth, marriage, or death or other life event, what major things were happening and what made the news on a local and global scale that could possibly have shaped our ancestors' lives. Context in family history is sometimes everything. I'll show you how to browse the newspapers on Trove using an example from one of my favorite resources, the Ryzen Index. So we'll just Google Ryzen. The first thing that comes up should be the Ryzen Index. So it's ryzenindex.org. So it's a free index to death notices, to funeral notices, to obituary, obituaries, published in Australian newspapers. And it goes uh, all the way back to when newspapers began in Australia in 1803 uh, through to uh, current issues. New content is always being added uh, and I found a lot of notices for a lot of relatives um, from searching the rice. And it's a fantastic resource. Um, my hat goes off to all the volunteers out there that add content to it. It's free to search. So we'll click search. And uh, it's just a matter of popping in a, uh, a surname. So we'll go Flynn. And we'll go Michael as a given name. And uh, I might know when he died or I might have a date range. I, I do know the year that Michael died. It's 1867. Okay, and we can see three results. Uh, so the, the index gives some information such as um, when he died, the age at uh, date of death if that's mentioned in the notice. Uh, other details in which newspaper the notice was published and the date of publication. So let's go back to Trove now and look for the notice that was published uh, about Michael Flynn's death in the Empire on the 9th of November 1867. So we're just going to close the horizon now and we're going to go back to Trove. To browse newspapers on Trove, all you have to do is click explore. And then click uh, browse newspapers and gazettes, open in browser. Okay, and here we are on the browse page. So you can browse articles by titles, place, date, category, and you can have a look at all the newspaper and gazette titles that are on Trove. I'll give it a quick click. It gives some statistics about the level of coverage on Trove. Sometimes it could take a little while to load, depending on how busy Trove is, if you get it at the peak hour, which I'm uh, currently at, at about lunchtime here. 
It might take a little while. And you can see all of the titles that are on Trove and it gives you an indication of what dates are covered as well, which is really useful. But we'll go back for now. Okay, and we're looking to browse uh, the Empire uh, 1867, November the 9th for the um, notice of Michael Flynn. So we'll go title. And then we just um, filter down. So we click E for Empire. Okay, we'll see we've got the Empire, but it was just the, uh, it was just Empire for Sydney. So we'll give that a click. You see date range covered 1850 to 1875. Then we'll go 1867. Then we can select the month from this drop down menu here. So it was November. And it was the 9th, which is a Saturday. Then we can click the page. It'll give an indication of the sorts of articles that are on that page. So you don't have to uh, exit out to page level and look through absolutely everything. If you wanted to do that, you could click the little I and then you'll be viewing the page. Okay, so you can see stock and share reports on page two, parliament information on page three, uh, shipping notifications on page four. We wanted family notices, which are on page one. How lucky we are. Okay. And here we are, we're now viewing the specific article that we're after. And we can um, magnify, or if you've got a scroll on your mouse, you can zoom right in. And here we can now view the death notice of Michael Flynn. And it reads, on the sixth instant at his late residence, number three Market Lane, Michael Flynn, late of the 50th Regiment, age 57 years. So we've got quite a lot of information about this person in a two line obituary or death notice that we can then use to go and hopefully research this person a little bit better. We know that he was um, in the British Army now. So we can trace information about his regiment um, and maybe start asking questions. Are there any records relating to that? Any muster books and pain lists? We also have his address. Um, so a huge amount of information in just two lines. Okay, um, while we're viewing um, the notice, I'm just going to explain some of the elements that we can see on this page here. Okay, um, so up here you've got all of the um, options to browse further. So we can go to the previous or next issue, or we can go back to browse issues. We can page turn. So previous, next, or browse pages. Uh, we can go to the next or previous article, or we can browse articles. Uh, the magnifiers over here, in and out. Uh, the rotate buttons, so pretty self-explanatory. Okay, I'm not sure why you use them. Maybe you um, maybe you have a picture that you've seen in the newspaper and you want to look at it from a different angle, perhaps. The, um, the reset zoom, so that takes us right back out to sort of page level. Uh, you've got the maximised viewer size over here in the, uh, the right corner. Okay, so now we're just viewing the individual page. Um, it's stretched across the browser window. And just close that. Uh, we've got the info button over here, or info tab, we can just click that. We've got our article identifier, so if you want to send somebody a, um, a link to this article or these notices, you would copy uh, this and send it to them, or perhaps you want to save it or bookmark it. This is a nice, clean, permanent link to the article that should never break, uh, unlike this up here, which is uh, full of the sort of the browse string that we just went through in the URL, less reliable. We've also got the page identifier. So maybe if you want to uh, view the entire page, you can click on this here. Okay, that'll take us back to page level. 
I'll be going over tags, lists, and notes a bit later in the talk. Um, so we won't really go into that too much now. Uh, article text. So this is text generated from a process called optical character recognition, um, which is where a machine reads the text in the article just here and translates it into a TypeScript over here. Uh, you've got categories. So again, we're in the family notice categories. Uh, you can download the article as an image, as a PDF, or you could download the text over here. Uh, you can download the page or the entire issue of the newspaper. The shopping trolley here will take you to the library's copies direct service. Perhaps you've found an article that is of um, terrible quality on Trove. Uh, the, uh, uh, the scans of the article tend to only be as good as the, the quality of the microfilm um, or newspaper that the content's digitised from. But say you want a better copy, and a lot of people particularly uh, request better copies of uh, photos that they find in newspapers. Um, you can order better quality copies, high resolution uh, digital downloads or uh, print copies via the library copy direct service uh, by filling out the online order form. Okay. Um, you can print the article, okay, as image, or you can print the, the text from the article over here. And toggle layout. So that's um, if you're uh, viewing uh, Trove articles via a mobile device or uh, maybe an iPad. Okay, so it switches the layout. So um, the um, the, the text appears just under here. Um, so that's really in a nutshell browsing uh, Trove's newspapers. The other way to locate articles on Trove is by keyword searching. So we'll go back to the Trove homepage. Here we are. There's a few ways to limit your search of Trove to newspapers. On the homepage, uh, we're greeted with a single search bar just here. We can type in a keyword, and I'm going to type in Henry Good, and hit enter or hit little magnifying glass. It's up to you. We can see we've got um, four over four million newspaper results. Uh, and we've got the top three results displayed. But just by using that single search bar, we've searched across all collections that are available via Trove. So we've got results for magazines and newsletters, images, maps, and artifacts, research and reports, books and libraries. And remember, these results are from libraries all over Australia. Over a thousand libraries, archives, and museums contribute content to Trove's federated search catalog. Easy enough to limit our search to newspapers and gazettes, so, or just newspapers, we just click here, see all newspaper and gazettes results. Then we've just got results for newspapers and gazettes, and we can limit further to just newspapers by just clicking on this little box just over here. Now we've only got results for newspapers, but we've still got over 4 million results. which isn't a very useful search. There's a few other ways to limit your search to dust newspapers. Back on the Trove homepage. You can type Henry Good again. We can click a little arrow in our next to all categories and limit our search right off the bat to newspapers and gazettes. And there we are. Again, you'll need to click newspaper to just limit your search to just newspapers. You can also click explore, uh, browse newspapers and gazettes, open browser, and search newspapers and gazettes up here. So we've got a variety of ways to limit our search to newspapers and gazettes if you want to search both. So we've searched for Henry Good, 
Again, we've got over 4 million results. It's not a terribly useful search. We've also got a high number of irrelevant results. We've got results for uh, Miss, uh, Mr. Charles Henry Good. We've got results for Sir Charles Henry Good. Henry Charles William Good. We've got Dulcie Good of Hopetown. We've got Mr. Henry Heal, Director of Good uh, Durant and Co. Or is it Burrant? Who knows? We've got a huge number of irrelevant results and that's because of the way that I formatted my search. If I search uh, for Henry Good just like this, I'm going to get results for articles where those two words appear somewhere in the article. No matter how unrelated they are to each other, as we saw with um, Henry Healy of Good Durant and Co. So instead of just popping a name in, what I'm going to do is enclose the name in quotation marks. and hit enter or the um, search magnifying glass over there. And we, you can see we've gone from over 4 million results to uh, just over 7,000 results. So that's a, a, a lot better than what we had. By using quotation marks, I'm performing what's called a phrase search. Some of you might also know it as a near search. A phrase search structured like this for Henry Good will find the words Henry and Good when those two words appear next to each other in an article. So it's useful for looking for names. This search still allows for one word in between Henry and Good, and it will still allow for some variation in the spelling of those two words to account for the imperfections of optical character recognition. So if Henry Good appeared in the newspapers with a middle name, this search will still pick up those articles. This allowance for an additional word in between a phrase is what's known very appealingly as a phrase slop. In this case, the phrase slop has a value of one because it allows for just one word in between Henry and Good. But what if I want to increase the number of words between Henry and Good? What if Henry Good had two middle names? I can still do my phrase search, but increase the number of words in between Henry and Good by adding a little symbol called a tilde after my phrase search. This is a tilde. It's a little squiggly line. It should be just below the escape bar on your keyboard. Just hold the uh, shift key and press it. And then I add the number two. This increases the number of words that can be between Henry and Good to two words. Or another way of putting it, we now have a phrase slop value of two. And we can see the number of results has appeared because I'm, I've broadened my search terms a little. So now my search will pick up articles where Henry Good appears in the paper with two middle names. If you happen to be called something as fantastic as Henry Hubert Egbert Good, for example, this search should still find him. Even more importantly, and this is why I really love the, uh, the tilde two, adding this squiggly tilde line and the number two will also find articles where Henry Good is written in reverse word order. So if his name was written in a newspaper as Good, comma, Henry, which is common in things like obituaries, this way of searching should still find those articles. I find this way of searching with naming quotations, tilde symbol and the number two, the best way to begin searching for somebody on Trove. And when I'm doing my family history, this is normally the way I start structuring my very first search for a person. It's much uh, more useful than performing a standard phrase search using the advanced search function. And I'll show you why now. So over here, we've got the advanced search, which is a feature I actually never use. Some of you might be big fans of it, 
um, I find it's easier to start with a broad search and then refine uh, using quotation marks and things like filter symbols. Okay, so here's the phrase search uh, field of the advanced search on Trove. And if we pop in his name just there and hit search, it's searching for the phrase Henry Good. So it's essentially the same kind of search as if we put his name in quotation marks without the tilde two. So we're not going to get things like reverse word order or up to two middle names, but we'll still get results for things like Henry, Harry Good, where he has one middle name. And this is applied as a search limit over here. So we can't even edit it. So it's much easier just to use the, the simple search and pop the name in quotation marks. Just so. You can increase the number of words in between a phrase by increasing the number or the phrase slop value after the tilde symbol. For some obituaries, you'd need to put a six or an eight after the tilde symbol in order to find them through a trove search because of the way they're structured. With surname at the beginning of the obituary and give a name somewhere in the middle or at the end of it. So if you've got something like good, my dearly beloved departed husband, Henry, you might need quite a long, uh, uh, quite a large sort of phrase slop. This will of course give you a huge number of irrelevant results, which is why it's good to have indexes like the Ryerson for death notices, obituaries and funeral notices. You can also decrease the number of words in between Henry and Good. So um, a basic sort of phrase search, just like this, will allow for one word in between Henry and Good. If we don't want any words between Henry and Good, we could just put tilde zero which is perhaps useful if you know an ancestor who definitely did not have a middle name. But even though we've gotten rid of all of the results in between Henry and Good, this search will still allow for some fuzziness or variation of spelling. Okay, and I'll show you some examples of this now. Okay, so we've got Henry's Good, Henry Good, no E on the end. Henry Good Man, Henry Gooden, okay. We've got uh, Henry Goods, so we're still getting some variation, okay. This uh, really is to account for the imperfections of optical character recognition. And I'll be talking about how to fix this in just a little bit. So let's go back to our search for Henry Good tilde two, which is my standard way of searching. And we'll look at ways to refine your search further. So you can see we've got almost 20,000 results. We can limit our search to newspapers over here. Trove makes it very easy to refine your results uh, to a particular time or place by giving us these filters on the right hand side of the screen. So you can uh, sort it by uh, state or territory, newspaper title, incredibly useful, category, so advertising, perhaps you're just looking for family notices, date range, a feature I use constantly, you can even limit uh, your search to articles which contain photos or illustrations or cartoons or maps. Uh, and I have found some photos of uh, people I've researched and ancestors from looking through Trove newspapers and limiting my search here, just using this photo here. One thing I tend not to use is the, uh, is the word count feature, but you might. So those are the various ways that we can. Uh, um, so if I know my Henry died in Rockhampton, Queensland during the 1920s, I can refine my search to the state he lived in 
So we could go Queensland, and we've gone from almost 20,000 results to just over 2,000. I can limit my search to a local newspaper title, which is an incredibly useful feature. And I might limit it to, to the um, Capricornian. There's a few newspapers for Rockhampton on here. And I can limit my uh, search or refine my results to the, uh, to the decade that I know my Henry passed away in. So I can go 1920 to 1929. And we can see there's two articles published about Henry Good for that period. Okay, we've done that. And now we've only got two results. So we've gone from uh, almost 20,000 results to just two, just by refining our results over here. Okay, and then we can click on the article and view it. Oops, I'm still toggled. Let's click that. So we can see my search terms are highlighted in, in uh, yellow over here. Okay, we can see the uh, optical character recognition text over here. Remember, um, when I've entered search terms, I'm not searching this over here. I'm not searching that because it's just a picture of a newspaper. What I'm searching is the, uh, the machine read text over here, optical character a lot of people uh, wonder how how do I get rid of that yellow sort of highlight um, and just have a, a clean image of the article. It's very easy. All you need to do is click on details just here and click the link to article identifier, which is a permanent link to the article. Um, so our search terms aren't factored into the equation now. Whereas before they're part of the, um, the string or the history of how we found this article, which you could see in the URL just up here. So when you search Trove, you are searching the um, optical character recognized text over here. Okay, and we can see uh, this is all looking pretty good. Okay, it's reasonably accurate. I can't really see any mistakes. Uh, that's because it's likely somebody has gone in and corrected it all. This isn't always the case, and I'll show you some examples of some badly uh, read machine text in the second half of this webinar. Okay, so that's how we've gone about searching for an article of Henry Good and refining our results. It's a pretty good example. Uh, it's a reasonably clear cut case. Depending on uh, your family and their circumstances and how often they were putting notices in the paper, um, you might have more or less luck finding, finding articles on Trove. Um, that's part of the joy of uh, searching through newspapers. You never quite know what you're going to come across. So we'll go back now and we'll clear all our limits. But I'll just click newspapers so we're not searching through gazettes. Okay, so we've done a, a very basic search uh, for Henry Good and we ref refined our results using the, uh, the features over here. So using the limits to limit our search to a very specific article. There's another way uh, that you can limit your search or refine your results, uh, and it's by using what librarians call Boolean terms or expressions. You can modify your search of Trove for an individual or for anything really with just, with, with just um, three little words, which are and, or, and not. So you can see uh, we've searched for Henry Good and there's a Sir Charles Henry Good, who's popping up quite a lot in our searches. Because he's somebody quite famous, he's going to appear everywhere um, and really sort of take up a lot of space in our, in our search results that we might not want. It's very easy to eliminate him from our search equation. The way we do that is by using 
Boolean uh, term not. Okay, so we can get rid of Charles by searching for articles that contain the phrase Henry Good, but not Charles. Okay, so we've got rid of all of the articles um, that contain the phrase Henry Good um, and also contain the phrase Charles. There's a real problem with this search technique. It will get rid of results that might be relevant because it will remove all articles that mention Henry Good that contain the word Charles. What if Henry Good had a son named Charles who is mentioned in an article about him? Or what if a Charles was mentioned in a death notice on the next line up or a few lines down in the article about family notices? We've eliminated it from our results. So you could potentially get rid of uh, results that you'd want to see. But it can be useful if you're getting a number of results that aren't relevant. If your ancestor had the same name as somebody famous, like an actor or a lord or lady or sir, uh, I've got a convict, Henry Sutton, who shares a name with an inventor who tends to hijack my search results. You can try searching for their name and then not actor or not lady or not inventor to get rid of those results that you don't want if they're appearing on mass. So that's not. So not is useful to eliminate results. Another Boolean term I use all the time is or. Henry Good wasn't always mentioned by his full name. Conventions of historic newspapers tend to be first initial only. He was often only uh, mentioned as H. Good. So I can find all newspaper articles that mention either Henry Good or H. Good at the same time by using or. And all I'm going to do is put in or in caps and put in H good, just as another phrase search, the same I did as uh, previous with Henry. And I'm gonna hit search. The number of our results will of course jump. That's because I'm now searching for articles that contain either the phrase Henry good or the phrase H good. My favorite Boolean expression or term though, is the word and. And does the opposite of not. It tells Trove to combine our search phrase with another word. So or was an either or search, and combines the phrase Henry Good with another word and finds all articles that contain this phrase. And perhaps we'll put in another phrase, uh, another word, such as the name of the town that he lived in, Rockhampton. So now we've hit search, we've got uh, just under 800 results and all of the results should contain the phrase Henry Good and the word Rockhampton. So it's a really useful way of limiting your search um, to search for an individual that was living in a particular place. You can really build on your search using these Boolean phrases, and it's quite useful if you were searching for a specific bit of information. I know that my Henry was a photographer um, when he lived in Rockhampton, so perhaps I wanna find articles that mention this and his activities as a photographer while he was in that town. So I can go uh, Henry Good and Rockhampton, and photographer. And now we should get all articles that mention the phrase Henry Good, as well as the words Rockhampton and photographer. And you can see we've only got just under 170 results now. So you can see it's a constant process of refining our search by using these, uh, uh, by using Boolean searching. So we've got quite good relevancy. The truth is you don't even really need to include the word and. A lot of people use a plus instead, so plus no space. 
and you can see it's, it's done the same thing, same number of results. Don't even really need to do that for uh, end. You can just type it in and it should uh, automatically sort of factor that you're looking for articles uh, which contain the phrase Henry Good and the words Rob Henry and Geographer. But I find it useful because I like to see uh, precisely how my uh, search is structured. So if you know the name or occupation or the names of children or the parents or spouse of an ancestor or any other identifying features such as an address, try phrase searching for a person and use a Boolean uh, search end to combine your initial results with another word or phrase. There are, however, very specific rules about combining an or search with uh, Boolean expressions and and not. You need to group your all phrases together using brackets. And this is where it starts to get very complicated. So remember our search for Henry Good was Henry Good or H Good. If we search for Henry Good or H Good and Rockhampton, If we search for articles that are, uh, if we structure our search like this, Henry Good or H. Good and Rockhampton, we're going to get results for articles that mention the phrase Henry Good or articles that mention the phrase H. Good and Rockhampton. We're not going to find articles that mention uh, necessarily Henry Good and Rockhampton. So we need to group Henry Good or H Good together using brackets, just like so, very easy. And there we have it. Now we should find uh, articles that mention the phrase uh, Henry Good and Rockhampton or H Good and Rockhampton, if that makes sense. It's a bit tricky things can start looking like a mathematical equation. Um, there's instructions on the help pages if you get stuck. But it's just um, important to be mindful uh, of that when you're playing around with that uh, Boolean or search. I do have one last advanced tip for searching on Trove. Uh, remember before we discussed um, uh, dis, uh, decreasing the phrase slop uh, to exclude or include things such as uh, middle names and reverse word order, um, but how we're still getting variation in the spelling of those two words, even when we search um, for something like Henry Good Zero to eliminate middle names, we'll still get variation in the spelling of the words Henry and Good. If you wanted to do what's called an exact search, so you only want to find results for articles with uh, those words exactly as they're spelled in the newspaper, it is a little bit complicated. So bear with me as we look at how it's done. I'm going to step away from Henry for a little while and use another example. And the example that I'm going to use is Frank Major. If I just search trove for Frank Major like I usually would, even using the technique of phrase or near searching, if we scroll down the page a bit, you can see I'm getting all kinds of results that aren't relevant. Major is a rank, so we're getting results from Major Frank Parker, and Major is also an adjective, so we're getting results talking about a time in 1954 that Frank took a major share. Even if I reduce the phrase slop to zero, It's still not quite an exact search. And of course it's sorted by relevancy, so it looks good. But if we go uh, to the last page, remember we're still getting variation in the spelling of those two words. So we've got Frank uh, majority and we've got Frank's major still. 
Remember, Trove uh, will always allow for some fuzziness or variation in how two words within a phrase are spelled uh, to compensate for the imperfections of optical character recognition. To do an exact search, all I need to do is type the word full text colon before Frank Major, keeping the phrase slop as zero and hit enter. If I do this by using that full text search, it will, I will only get results for Frank Major. No middle names, no reverse word order, and no variation or fuzziness in the spelling of Frank and Major. Often you don't want to do an exact search because you'll miss out on things. Remember, allowing for some inaccuracy is useful. The one thing to keep in mind is that it's better to start broad and then refine and try using Boolean terms to build your search. That said, if you have a family member who has the same name as a ship or a rank, or perhaps you've got uh, somebody with a surname Field and you're getting articles about sporting ovals all over the country, um, an exact search can be useful. So that's the basics of searching Trove. All of the tips about Boolean searching and more can be found on the Trove help pages just up here. And happy troving.